Hello and welcome. My name is Philipp Halfmann and I'm the Director of Exercise and Sports Science at the IAAPH. And I'm also the author of Advanced Concepts of Strength and Conditioning for Tennis. In today's episode, I will explain why USD President Joe Vygotsen is wrong about the reasons for the decline of US tennis. Vygotsen basically states three reasons. One, technological advancements. Two, too much domestic competition for talents and three, too much competition outside of the US. Now that doesn't really sound convincing, does it? So let's take a closer look at what John Vergosen was saying about the decline of US tennis. According to John Vergosen, who is chairman of the board and president of the USTA, the USTA's mission is to promote and develop the growth of tennis with focusing on promoting and developing the growth of people through tennis. When asked about the explanation why there was a recent decline in the US dominance in tennis while other countries, especially European countries, have caught up in recent years, his responses were basically like this. First, the professional game has changed significantly with advances in technology, especially with strengths. The game is now largely played from the backcourt and it's not as easy for American players who learn to surf and volley to compete. Who surfs and volley? Uh, second, in other countries, tennis is one of the most popular sports right behind soccer. In the US, the best athletes have a wide variety of other sports they can choose to take up. Since the fall of the Berlin Wall, the world has opened up in ways we never thought possible and tennis has caught on like wildfire in countries that never used to exist. As Tom and Friedman has said, it has indeed been a flat world. Well, one could argue that John McGowan's answers to the problem are inadequate because his conclusions are incorrect. So let's dissect his first answer in more detail. The professional game has changed significantly with advances in technology, especially with strengths. True. The game is now largely played in the backcourt. True. He concludes, therefore, it is not as easy for American players who learn to surf and volley to complete. Wrong. Well, first of all, I don't even know who he's talking about. American players surf and volley, he must be so thinking maybe about Pete Sampras, who was uh, fairly successful in it. But uh, doesn't style of play have to do with coaching, with meaning, you know, the tennis coaches, what kind of strokes they actually taught you, meaning stroke production, can you hit a slice, can you hit a one-handed backhand, are you comfortable volleying, do you have a good serve, do you have a decent second serve, can you kick, can you slice, all those things. Then how about fitness, mental toughness, now, all those things are variables that will determine how successful you're going to be on the tour. So it would have been a better approach to actually talk about how to improve the quality of USGA coaching or the overall program the USGA offers to its high performance players. Now, the second reason in other countries, tennis is one of the most popular sports right behind soccer. True, such as in Europe. In the US, the best athletes have a wide variety of other sports they can choose to take up. True. Conclusion, popularity of tennis is higher outside the US and competition with other sports is higher within the US, which implies that more and more people play tennis outside the US than inside the US. Well, the problem with that conclusion is that he's comparing apples with oranges. In America, we have about 300 million population, and 27 million out of that you know, basically play tennis on a regular basis. So we're talking about roughly 9% of the population in America is playing tennis on a regular basis. Now, if you take countries like Germany, for example, we have a population of uh, roughly 81 million and uh, we have about 5 million people overall playing tennis, out of which 1 million plays on a regular basis, 
then we are talking about 1.2% of the population. So, in other words, even if tennis only ranks um, sixth in the population in America, when it comes to quantity, meaning how many people are playing, it's still a very large amount of number compared to, let's say, with Germany, where tennis is ranked number two in popularity, but only 1.2% of the population actually playing the sport. And the third and final reason, since the fall of the Berlin Wall, the world has opened up in ways we never thought possible. True. Tennis has caught on like wildfire in countries that never used to exist. Maybe. Conclusion, more competition has led to a decline, to a decline of U.S. tennis. Well, competition in sports is usually a good thing because it helps people to excel. People have to work harder and they, you know, go after each other and that's how everybody involved gets better. And it's kind of a lame excuse for a market leader, if you look at it like that, like the U.S. used to be in tennis in the 90s and actually in the 2000s as well, uh, in dominating the sport. And now they all of a sudden they're complaining about it, well, it's too much competition and that's the reason why, you know, we can't keep up. With, with the success we used to have. Uh, and uh, in countries like Germany, where people are playing uh, over the years, you know, during the Becker and Graf era of the 90s, there were, you know, tons of people playing, a lot of kids were playing, everybody wanted to be a Steffi Graf or Boris Becker, but now, you know, there are many, there are many, many good tennis players in Germany, a female and male, but nobody really is able to win a Grand Slam, so the number of people actually going after the sport has dropped considerably. And uh, what I think is more important is when you take a look at the infrastructure that people in America have available at the USDA, at Division I universities. I mean, I, you know, we're talking about 20 courts, hard courts, clay courts, hard through courts, grass courts in some instances even. Then you have registered you know, dietitians available for the athletes, you have athletic trainers, you have strength and conditioning coaches, you have tennis coaches, when you have anything that anybody could want in order you know, to be able to be successful, running tracks, anything. And yet, people are not able to produce successful athletes in US tennis. And so, I would think it might have to do with the quality of the coaching involved. There have to be quality people involved at the highest level of the game. And I don't think that that is really the case. Well, that's it again for today's episode. As usual, opinions differ. What's your point of view? Let us know below in the comment section. A brand new episode will be available next Sunday. So make sure you don't miss it and subscribe. In the meantime, I recommend you watch some of the previous episodes. You should really watch them all. If you like what you saw, tell your friends. I'm sure they will appreciate it. I'm Philipp Halfmann. Thank you for watching and Auf Wiedersehen! Tennis Conditioning TV episodes are licensed under Creative Commons. You are welcome to link or embed these videos, forward them to others and share these ideas with people you know. Brought to you by Advanced Concepts of Strength and Conditioning for Tennis. Available at TennisConditioningBook.com Music by Dan O at DanOSongs.com